Hello everybody and welcome back to Europa Universalis 4, our Ming Celestial Empire campaign. So just, just to kind of recap what happened here, we are currently at war with the Mago Khanate, their lords of the Oriat Horde, and then even Tibet jumped into this war. So we're being sieged in Dali by a Tibetan army, it's only 8,000 strong. Not that strong, but we don't really have any forces to deal with that. I'm also dealing with a peasant uprising of Manchu patriots over here. Korea is doing what it can against the Mongols right there by sieging Jordan. And let's see, the Oryat Horde's army looks like they're only 10,000 strong, which I have an army of 10,000 with no leader there, and then an army of 12,000 coming in to support. Now this army here of 8,000 is coming at us, and if I'm correct, we sh they should get a negative when they're fighting because they're going to cross this river into uh, Gu Guyuan. So. The battle should go into our favor, but just to be on the safe side, and also because I have a lot of military power right now, I'm going to try and hire another leader. Or do I? Or should I just use my own guy? Hold on. Let me look at my own emperor here. He's only a 1-1-1, one, 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 but we do have an heir if he dies who's actually better. So I'll tell you what, instead of actually hiring another general, I am just going to have our leader, our emperor, lead this army himself. So we'll go back here, and we will select, make a general out of your ruler. I guess we could also use our heir, but our heir is technically better with the stats, so I'm going to make our emperor the, the leader here. There he is. The emperor is now leading and inspiring the men. And we are still low on manpower. Can I hire any more mercenaries? Yes, we have eight long spear infantry and four East Asian cavalry mercenaries. So... The bonus to mercenaries is that they do not take your manpower. Uh, they do go against your army force limits, though, but we have a lot of slots open. So, let's see. The peasants should be pretty easy to bring down. But there is also another Manchu army over there as well. Hmm. How do I want to do this? The Tibetan army is 8,000 strong as well. We have 12 units total. This is closer to being taken over by the rebels, though. But yet, if they take this over, this is going to affect our war score. So that's, I guess, technically more important. But that's still a negative 42%, so I think we still have a long time. I think I can hire mercenaries up here, crush the peasant rebellion, and, um then move them into the southern part of our empire. Alright, so there's all the infantry. Let's hire the cavalry because we have a lot of money so we can afford to do this. There we go. And we will keep all of our manpower that we have currently into reinforcing our standing armies here and here. Which I think there's mercenaries in these armies too, right? We should be able to check. No? I don't think any of those are mercenaries. Ah, the green ones are mercenaries. So yeah, this entire army basically is, is uh, made up of, of mercenaries. But again, okay, because we have a ton of income. Alright, so we have a leader. This guy's still heading over there. We're getting a mercenary army up and running. Is there anything else I can do before we unpause the game? I still have a lot of military power, but of course we should be saving it to increase our military tech. So let's just unpause the game. Oh, we are still in the... Uh, Speed 4, I want to kind of slow that down since we're at war. So they're not going to head here. They're instead just going to try to siege. Okay. Now the problem with this is if I attack from here, I'm going to get a river crossing penalty. So I'm going to walk this army up into Alza and then go south. So hopefully we do not have a river crossing penalty. Ooh. And it looks like they want to head up there too. So they'll arrive on the 16th. We'll arrive on the 23rd, so I'm going to have an army pen or um, a penalty if we go in there. So tell you what, let's move this army into Dorno Govi and then head south. This army will head up here and then go west, because I don't want to cross this river. And here is our mercenary army. We'll have them meet in. Hi Z. Is everybody running over there? Yes. Ooh. 
I guess we'll put these guys in Sanjing. Okay, so we just want to battle somewhere. Battle of Ordos. I guess there was an enemy army there. Alright, so these guys are heading to Ordos and we'll be here in a few days. I will send this army south. I believe this army should be able to take these guys, so I'm not really that afraid. My Emperor trading in tea has happened upon us. Advisor costs are minus 33%. That sounds pretty cool. And trading in Chinaware. Our yearly legitimacy goes up by 0.25. We're already at max, but still, I guess that's okay. Our mercenaries are still going down. Korea's heading down as well. Alright, so they decided to stop and not invade Ordos. Now, let's look at this battle here. So our leader is 1311, their leader is 255. Oh my god. We need reinforcements immediately. Uh, Manchu Patriots have taken control. Oh my goodness. We're gonna lose this, this fight here. Oh my god. We're just getting wrecked. Well, hopefully this army can finish the job. Oh my goodness, dude. They got reinforcements. And I did look this up. We also do have a river crossing, which is giving us negative. But I guess that the AI's leaders, they kind of cheat in that regard, and they always get pretty amazing leaders when you would get crap leaders. That's kind of, that's kind of crappy. Let's see, the Manchu Patriots are now heading up here. We'll get them eventually. Man, that's just terrible. Wow. God. Uh, lose one stability, gain three inflation. Oh, let's just gain three inflation. Oh my goodness. We just got totally annihilated, man. The initial battle, though, was in our favor. Like, what's these guys' tech level? Tech level. Can I see that? Is their tech, like, their military just that much better than ours? I don't even know how we would see this. Uh, oh, right here. Well, their military level is 3, and ours is only a 2. Right? Yeah, so maybe they have, like, additional bonuses, I guess, in morale and stuff. Maybe even better units, for all I know. Wow. I just can't believe we got crushed so easily. Alright. Well... That sucked. Let's send this army over here with the mercenaries and at least try to quell this damn peasant rebellion. Looks like Korea's trying to help out our province there. The Mongols are kind of just sitting in their own territory. And Tibet is still trying to take out... Ooh, they actually split their army up. Hmm... Can we get any more mercenaries? We can. Good thing we have a lot of money, because we are definitely losing this war. Overtaxation is getting high. Um, province is under siege. Okay. Just waiting for this army to get up there. I guess we can speed up time a little bit. We're not going to split up our forces because apparently we need everything we can get. Especially since the computer gets amazing leaders for their armies. And now they're sieging us. I'll eventually get there. 
All right, let's merge this all together. Take out these rebels. You know, what? actually, no, 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 no. Siege of Yunnan. Okay, so Tibet is taking our stuff. Is that a? This is a river too, isn't it? Okay, well, we'll just. I guess we'll take the river. See, the rebels are a 2 2 1. Two, two, one. Okay. Thank God we can kill rebel patriots. Or are they. Uh, I'm assuming they're coming back down here. Or are they dead? I think they're just dead. Alright, so now let's get this army into our land. Battle of San Chin. Oh no, we were falling. Okay. Now they're crushed, right? Alright. So, we still have the Mongols in our western part of our empire. The Tibet is in our southern part. Just doing what they can. Our army is getting there. Siege of Yumen. We have lost the Siege of Yumen. Right there. Okay, any more mercenaries we can hire? Yes, there are. Okay. Uh, we have no missions. Reduce over extension is what I will try to do. Claim our rival's province of Wusuli. We would get five prestige and military power. Same thing for this. Where is Wusuli? Or what is Wusuli? Oh, that. Well, I'm not really worried about claiming these since I'm in a war with the Mongols over here. Hmm. But all I have to do is claim it, so I guess I can I guess I can do that. Alright. We'll claim Wusuli to gain some military power and prestige. So let's send a diplomat to fabricate a claim in Wusuli. Our other diplomat. Uh we'll just kinda keep around for right now. Guess we need him. Alright, unpause the game. Mercenaries should be popping up here soon. There they are. Now hopefully with this massive army, we can kill these Mongols. We're taking attrition damage because um, these places can't support all these people. My Emperor have been informed that our agent and again has been discovered by Manchu. That's unfortunate. An army of 34 strong. 34,000. Let's go in Ordos. We'll get down into Alzia and then head south. Oops. Oops. We've lost since you bond. Okay. Production, we can get more mercenaries. We need to stop this Tibetan army. Let me get some mercenaries starting to recruit down here. Wait a minute. That's just... Oops. That's our normal infantry. That's not what I meant to select. I think we have a lot of money. Looks like the Oriad Horde has withdrawn way back there. We have won the Battle of the Human instantly. Let us 
Let's see, let's drop a siege force here and keep moving. Never mind, where the hell are these guys going? They're going to Gansu and will arrive on the 13th. Our army will not arrive quick enough to catch them. What about if we go there? Still won't arrive early enough to catch them. Wow, they are really fast! Oh my god, they are really fast. I wonder if they're doing, um... You can do like a force march thing. I wonder if that's what they're doing. Because, damn, they are fast! Let's get more mercenaries. Now they're heading down here. Now they're heading up. Now they're heading down here. What the hell? Oh my god. You guys suck. Accept the demands or ignore them. Lose 50 diplomatic power or lose 10 prestige. Let's lose 10 prestige. Hey, look at that, we got a claim. There's so much shit going on. I cannot catch this army, because they're faster than I am. And whatever move I do, they are going to counter the move I and move somewhere else. So I'll tell you what, you know what? Let's drop a unit to siege here, and we'll just keep playing cat and mouse with these guys. That's really annoying. My Emperor, we have lost the Siege of Wenshan from Tibet. Okay. Do you have any more mercenaries? We do. Let's also hire some actual standing army troops. We should be able to take care of them. And as soon as we take care of that army, we can take that all back. What's Korea doing? Um, Korea's back here. I think they just claimed our territories for us. Because they were sieged by those rebels, so thank you, Korea. Meanwhile, here, we are still just playing cat and mouse with this army of 12,000. Now... I do know that you can abuse the AI in this game. Wow, this is long autosave. Um, hello? <laughs> is this game really crashing right now? Okay, cool. So what I was going to say is, what I do know is that the AI cannot change its move if it is a day before it arrives in a province. So let's say, like, let's look here. So they're going to arrive here on the 14th of April. If I choose to wait to move until they are a day away, so until it's April 13th, then they can't change their movement. I guess the AI just can't process the information fast enough. And that's the way that you can abuse, I guess, the AI. And I, I don't really want to do that, but I guess if I don't do that, then I'm going to be stuck in this infinite game of cat and mouse of then moving down. I move down, they move up, so I guess I should just try that. So we'll wait until the 13th of April. Alright. 
Repairing the Great Wall. Ever since the capture of Emperor Zheng Tong by the Mongols, security on the northern frontier has been an important issue. One problem is the sorry state of the Great Wall, built in ancient times but left to crumble in recent centuries. We could repair the wall, but it would be expensive and the effort, both physical and fiscal, would likely cause some unrest among the people. However, with their improved defenses, the provinces in the area would likely become more productive and secure. So we lose money and a stability, but gain 5 army tradition. Or we gain a stability and gain 24,000 manpower? What does it exactly like army tradition do for me? It must be pretty important. Where is that at? Army tradition. Okay, so it boosts our morale, it boosts manpower recovery speed, recovery army morale speed, and would increase our temple faction influence. And it's currently decaying. So I could gain 5, which I guess would improve our morale and manpower reco recovery speed, or I could just gain stability and gain man manpower. Like, I think this is the better choice. Unless there's an, a mission to repair the Great Wall or something, and I just didn't even look at it. Uh, let me look at these missions. Overextension, yeah. Repair relations with Manchu. We get diplomatic power. Conquer with Sully, we get five prestige. We can't really do that right now. Let's try this reduce overextension, because I, I am going to do that eventually. I guess, but what is... Three Diplomat. I'm not exactly sure what that gives us, but... I'm sure it's good. Alright, so right now we are at a negative 3286. We are losing money rapidly, but we have a ton of manpower. So let me recruit... Some more troops here. Oh wow, we are over our force limit. Okay, that's all we're going to do then. Let's unpause. Alright, so now they kept moving. Oh my god, I totally forgot to move, didn't I? Oh my god. The whole Great Wall thing, it, uh... It pulled my attention elsewhere. Son of a bee. Well, we got Yemen back. These guys are gonna arrive on the... 8th of May. There's no way we can get this army out of there, is there? Nope. 4th of June. Well, I guess you just sit there then. And you die. I wonder if they're gonna sit there. It looks like they are. Give it to me. Wow. Wow. God. We had like more than double their numbers, but that river crossing, holy shit. Our traditional fisheries are proving. Okay, yeah. Dude. Temple faction diplomacy. Uh, Orient Horde opinion of Ming changes by plus 20. I don't care about that. Gain 20 military power. Temple faction gains for influence. Let's do that. Um, why exactly did we have a river crossing if we were coming from this province, though? There's no river right there. I mean, I see a river right there, but does that does that actually count, I guess? This little sliver of river? My god. We are just getting crushed in this war. Oh my god. Let me... Am I actually funding my army? Like, is that what's going on here? No, they are fully funded. I guess our military difference of our tech being 2 and their tech being 3 is just that big? I, I don't know. Oh 
Alright, we'll merge. Give you guys our leader. And this place is surrounded by rivers, so I don't see a way to get around that. I can't believe that's a river crossing from these two. Oh, we got the siege there. Let's pull those troops back. Um, let's combine our forces. There we go, that brings us under our force limit. And Send these guys up. And let me look at my war score. Or, um, war exhaustion. Where's that at? Stability? 8.69. So we can spend some diplomatic power to get that down. I think we should. Because that increases our revolt risk. I can use administrative power to boost our stability, but I don't know if I want to spend that much. No. And I'm going to need some kind of diplomatic power to talk about peace in this war at some point, so I won't spend any more. Oh my god, I can't believe how badly we're losing this war. We have so many numbers. So much numbers. They already took human back. Thank God we can beat the Tibetan army at least. So where are these guys heading? There? They're probably going back into their own territory. Move these guys into Hanzhong. I'm gonna move this army up to Hanzhong too to deal with the Mongol army and then maybe I guess come back and take out these. Or take these back from Tibet. I guess. Honoring the Ancestors. Increase the Eunuch Faction, gain stability, gain prestige, army and navy tradition, or gain money and lose one def uh, inflation. Let's keep bumping up the Temple Faction here. So they're trying to take that back. Let's combine, and these guys will head up here, and we will take out this army with... Oh, they're actually heading towards us. Okay. Oh, let them come. I mean, look, look how quickly our morale drops! These attackers have a negative three because of river crossing and terrain. And yet, they are whooping our ass. I guess they- look at that discipline though. I guess that makes a huge difference. They have 105 discipline, we only have 75. They have 2.6 morale, we only have 2. And even with negative 3, they just instantly destroyed us. I- oh my god. Alright, gain 20 in mid power, bureaucratic faction. Lose, gain 5 legitimacy and bureaucratic faction. Let's do that. I just, I can't get over this game. They had a minus 3 and they whipped their ass instantly. I guess tech levels just mean that much. That is just wild. And they are chasing us. Um... Good god, man. We're still at our army force limit, too. Like, I can't even... Oh, Jesus. There's, like, no battle I can win against these guys right now.
the morale is just... I, I, I don't know. I, I, wow. That is just insane, man. Alright. A royal uh, marriage from Dive Yet. I think I'm already above my diplomacy limit, so I'm gonna have to decline. Let's see, the event Yumin defects to the Oriat Horde happens. The local authorities in Yumin have no problem adapting to the new rules and laws of the occupier. Now, due to the disastrous progress of this war, they have already accepted the foregone conclusion of their transfer at the peace table and have defected. Wow. I lost Yumin, I guess. Uh, disagreeing advisor... He's been a faithful servant so far, but now he seems to have grown too insolent. He dares to denounce our great emperor's policies, and he recently did so in public in front of his foreign ambassadors. Um, one of three options will happen. We may gain some stuff, but lose fire prestige. Or the treasurer dies. I think we just gained some uh, administrative power. I'm going to try to wait for morale to go up as high as I can, which it looks like it is. We'll give time for our manpower and get our troops back up to full strength, and then we're going to try again to kill that army that is so much lower than ours, and Tibet now is another army of 10,000. Oh my god. Can I increase my technology yet? 1222. God, we're still so far away. What is this? A peace offer? They want human. And I'll have to pay them 60 ducats. F you guys. I'm gonna win this war. Screw your peace offer. Alright, we're almost back up to full strength. Let's head out. We have to be able to win this fight. I cannot believe that shit. 39,000 troops versus 12,000. Yes, they have better military tech, but are you kidding me? They... Oh my god. Their leader just is that amazing, I guess. He was that, like, 5-5-2 five, five, guy. Wow, I I don't know what else we can do against. I guess we do have to peace out. I I can't believe an army of thirty eight thousand or whatever can't kill an army of twelve. That that boggles the mind. All right, and Tibet is still conquering our southern region, and now patriots have risen up and are trying to take that for themselves. Right, I forgot about this. These guys were built to increase our trade. Oh my god. Well, you know what? I, I, have, to, I have to sue for peace. Or maybe I should wait for them to offer me... Peace again. I just, I can't believe our army can't take them. them on patrol.
They want Yumin, and Ming will give the core of Haishi to Manchu. Ming will give the core of Kaka to Manchu. Ming will pay six... Oh my god. Wow, they just want more. I, uh... I can't believe we can't kill this army. There are only 12,000 of these fuckers. No! Damn it, no! One more time, we're gonna fight them again. though, even though their troops are apparently so much better than mine are. You know what? We're going to uh, continue this war in the next episode, I think. A war that I'm obviously losing, but I refuse to cede. I'm going to win. I'm going to eventually wear these bastards down, and I'm going to take back everything. Look, see, now they're running. Now they're running. Uh, so anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. Tibet is still on the loose. I um, I guess I now understand how important tech levels really are, and again, their leader is just so much better than ours. So much better. God, that makes such a huge difference, I guess. Like, the numbers, like, the numbers mean almost nothing, apparently. That's just so crazy. We have, like, triple the number. Anyway, whatever. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care.